Hey guys, this is Joshua Peterson, Peterson Electric. Uh, doing a video today about an inside remodel. A gentleman called us to have a wall removed he's doing. So he's trying to open up the kitchen to the dining. And um, when he called me on the phone, um, you know, it always sounds a little more simpler than it is, but uh, most of the time people call, they're like, you know, I've got three junctions and a thermostat, and it should be really quick and easy. It can be sometimes quick and easy, but he had an outlet here, he had a switch here, switch to do that light right there, and then a switch here that did the kitchen switch, and then a thermostat, and then a telephone. So what I wanted to walk through you today, it'll take a couple minutes here, but we dropped all the wires down after tracing. Um, the first thing I always suggest to do, um, do you guys have that uh, schematic I have? Yeah. Okay. The first thing I always suggest to do, and I do this just because I, I feel like I know what I'm getting into once I'm done with it, um, but I just traced out the kitchen because in the future he's going to do kitchen remodel. I wanted to make sure that the lighting circuit wasn't connected to a bunch of stuff. Normally when I see these kind of light circuits in the 80s, I always have this vent hood a part of that circuit. And so when they take it out at one and a half amp or one amp for a light and a fan, and then they stick in an over counter microwave that's 12 and a half amps or 1500 watt, well as soon as they hit the microwave the lights blow up. And that's because you have to run a dedicated circuit typically to your microwave. Um, but anyway, so I traced out the kitchen real simply, and then on here I gave them a, a, you know, just a date on here exactly when I did this trace so we can remember back then. But this was the lighting circuit that came out, and uh, this circuit had basically, going through the schematic, power came in from the garage to that light switch, to this outlet, to that outlet, to this outlet, then it went down in the basement to a basement light, but then it came up to here. And then it went to this switch to there, and then it also fed from this outlet down over to go to the back porch light and the kitchen sink light. So I'll take you down the stairs and show you kind of our method of doing that. Well, we went ahead and got everything opened up here, and uh, we put an outlet in for them because they kind of requested that. They may go carpet here again, and they can finally plug the vacuum. They don't have a, an outlet in the hallway, and the code now states that you should have at least one outlet in a 10-foot hallway at the minimum. So we figured that would be a good thing. There was no outlet on this wall either. Then we came up to here. So now this is finally our kitchen light, and this is our dining, which the dining had a 14.3 there, and that was for a ceiling fan. So once power is restored down below, we are able to restore power back to this light as well. And then we were able to fish this thermostat wire back up, which was luckily long enough to get over and get back up over to here to connect that. So let's go downstairs. So once we had all the wires down here, we had the customer open this up. Uh, so for all of my YouTube haters that like to criticize me on drywall, uh, you might as well just turn off this video at this point. But basically, the customer opened up this drywall, and we needed to open up this amount because all the wires were coming down here and through here, which was a little challenging with the air duct right there. But we drilled all the way down, and we're able to get the wires back up and through here to the new area location so he could remove that wall and open up his, his living room. All the area right up in here, this is where we spliced. So we had to do our count of how many wires were. We had 15 wires, including the ground. So the code talks about a 20.5 inch box. It's a single gang deep that you can only get 10 number 14s in. Well, in here, we got 15 number 14. So we had to put a two gang box here. The reason being is that we had three wires coming down with our ground and our neutral for our dining fixture. That then had to couple and go that way to go up and be extended. Then we had a power going out and a power going out this way to the outlet lights and also to this other section of the home. Then we had a power coming in from this light right here. So by the time we did our count, we ended up with 15 wires, which fits pretty snug. Um, I probably could have got that in a single game, but I don't like to push too much volume on that just because it's going to be spliced. You never want to keep these splice boxes above drywall. 
In fact, when I was feeding down the other switch leg in the other laundry room, we found a splice box above where it looked like somebody put in that drop ceiling the hard lid in the laundry and they covered up a splice box. So the reason why it's important to have this below drywall is because if we have to trace it, we have to know what is going on. The other thing for you more experienced people on this video, we've got our neutrals coming in. So this is just typically our 14.3. This could be a traveling system. This could have been smoke detector. But in this case, it is a ceiling fan. So our fan, our light, and our neutral. Now, this is the same circuit in this box. It's all circuit 13. Where you don't want to do is you don't want to put this together if this was 13 and 14, for instance, because those neutrals would be shared. And therefore, then the arc fault breaker would trip and then imagine drywall over it. You're never going to find that damn splice. So what's important is though this is the same circuit, I still don't like tying together my, my switch leg for my fan to the neutral here, which comes from the panel this way. The reason why is if I have to trace that switch leg back to the switch, wondering if there's something bad, well, if you tie these together and you take the black apart or the red up there and you use your neutral, it's going to look like you still have a light bulb hooked up, and you're going to read some ohms through it. Maybe not quite 20 to 60 ohms on that you would be getting in resistance, but you're still going to read continuity, and you shouldn't be. So I like to keep my neutrals separated because this is a switch leg and these are my powers. So for you more experienced guys, keep that in mind when you're tracing in the future. I also, um, if you can see it, I label the side of my boxes inside and out as well. Come around here, please. Um, I label it over here as well, my wire cables. So if a guy ever has to get in here or remodel, he can see what I did and why. You know, power to the porch, power in, power out, switch leg, blah, blah, blah. Here as well, I labeled on this side as my as it enters. I think it's just good practice. It takes a few minutes. Um, and I think that, you know, a good electrician will label so other guys will know what will happen later. Later, But we're going to put a blank on this for now. He's going to buy a CO2 detector. So simply you can, um, we could power it because there is a constant hot here. And we could leave a drill a hole in the center and then screw that CO2 right to that blank plate. Or we could just put in a false CO2 detector with a, a sticky back or just have a battery backup or just a battery uh, CO2 detector, excuse me. So that way it doesn't look like just a blank in the basement. The other one we were able to pull this way and get into the laundry room, which we barely got in above that ducting. But this is what I prefer to do. And so we'll tuck that up there. And this was a switch leg to the kitchen because that was too short to go this way and too short to go that way. And we didn't want another junction out there. So we pulled it into the laundry just by a few feet. When we were up there though, we saw that right above this hole, measured it, there is another splice box that somebody else buried. And then our telephone line, which they said they're not gonna use, we just pushed it this way. So later he's gonna dig that out. But right now I just labeled that data splice above and hidden 120 splice box. I did not put that in there myself because I would never do that above drywall. But I did find that to label it. This one's going to be labeled right here, uh, just 120 volt switch leg for kitchen, and it's not a constant power. So if someone wanted to put, you know, a, a smoke, which I don't think will work with the door frame, it's going to hit anyways. But, uh, you know, assume they thought that, you know, the door wasn't there. We wouldn't want them to think that they could put a smoke detector there. And then they turn the switch leg off and they come back the next day. And then why does that thing keep chirping and the battery's out? Well, that's because it's on a switch leg. So we labeled that there for him. And then this one as well. Just two number 13s were used for the dining, a 14 and a two power wire, two, two power outs for the 14, two, and another was the power in, and I put the date of when it was done. And I'll put that there, and again, he'll just put that CO2 detector. So really when he's done, it won't look like anybody was down here with a bunch of splices in the ceiling. Um, yeah, anyways, guys, thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll see you next week.